is Dean Arvin from Cincinnati, Ohio. Dean Arvin, come on down. And our home viewer. This is Mark Fowler. Okay, Mark, all right, if you would, on this lane. Let's get out of his way here, Kathy, so we don't get run over. As, as you know, because of jackpot this week, $300. If he gets a strike, he splits it with a home viewer. If he doesn't, we throw in some free game passes for every penny knocks down. Seven is the count. Congratulations. Just remember, if you too would like to participate in the Golden Ball Contest, just send your cards in to the BPA Golden Ball Contest, 1821 Summit Road, Cincinnati, Ohio, for room in between those pins to do that. But you will see it done more often than not. Danny Moses with a big old split here in frame number two. Rary not making a really bad shot. We've got it for you, too. You want to see why it's bad? See, you cannot come up off your feet when you're making a shot, or the ball is always going to go high, right straight through the nose. Leaves a very, very difficult split in the area. Ooh, gave it a ride. Looks well, like Danny's throwing a fairly new ball and it has a dollar surface, which is going to hook more. I'm not so sure he's compensating for it. 11 pins is uh, his cushion at this point, and that's only because Mr. Moses opens with two opens. Don't rarely, don't very often see that in a match, and uh, I don't think we're going to see a whole lot of it here as soon as he gets settled down. Well, the man from Covington will try to get it going right here in the third. <laughs> Solid 10. Raise that. And Jenna, I don't know if it's just me, but it looks like he's rearing up more and more than he normally does. And not only is it going to cause you to pull the ball more, it's going to cause you to leave pins even when you do hit the pot. Exactly. Because you're not getting that good leverage. Staying low at the line is one of the very, very important things that we try to teach at an early age in this game. Well, he gets a spare under his belt here in the third frame. <clears throat> Excuse me? You're excused. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sure thing. Kim Herman now on the sixth. Oh. Oh. <laughs> he actually, let's see if we can pick up his uh, release on this one if we might. <clears throat> He goes around the ball a little too quickly. Let's watch his hand position. Now watch it. Goes around the side of the ball, creates a spin. Now look at skate, 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 skate. Doesn't ever go into that clean, hard roll. Deflects strongly to the left, leaves a 5'10", five, five, temporarily, and makes a spare. So Kim Herman still down by nine pins as we head into the seventh frame. So still, anybody's match, and nobody's certainly looking like they want to take control at this point. Better shot. Much better shot. Oh, bad, bad break. Going with the loft the way Kerry Logan was going with loft earlier, and it pays off with a great shot and a bad break. What gets the ball out on the lane, a little extra grimace there, put a little more behind the ball, and wow, what a shot. Look at that four pin around the belly. Not meant to be right now, but that was a super shot for Kim Herman. Dave talked about the finals coming up next week. Some formal final winners, uh, Hank Hetz, Carl... Yeah, but this guy, nine years his junior, 16-year-old Brian Himmler. He's still going to school, folks. Goes to Anderson High School. Well, you want to talk about going to school? Go to school on this. <laughs> Rip. Yeah, who didn't know that? How huh? about that, huh? Very, very few times, George, will you see someone that you can call a prodigy. Brian Himmler is a prodigy in the game of bowling. He's well-schooled. He's talented. He's worked on his game. He's a good spare shooter. Uh, there are very few negatives that you can pick out about this man's game, and uh, you're sure not going to see it right here. The scout just missed. Brian, Brian Himmler throws a great shot. Take a look at it here if we can. The stone flying 10 pin, head pin, center of your screen is going to go to the left hand wall and come across and look for that 10 pin. There it is coming off the wall. Now where are you at? Where are you? Uh, 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 
but an easy spare to shoot at, and he makes his spares. He just got in from Rochester, New York, minutes ago before our telecast. He bowled up there in a tournament and uh, just missed making money up in Rochester, and he's here with us today. And, of course, David Neurath was waiting patiently to see him come through the door because, indeed, <laughs> David was six this week. <laughs> Yeah, I, I was waiting patiently. I couldn't find the key to keep the door locked. <laughs> Ralph Goyette with a strike in the second frame. Ralph Goyette, an animated player. You're going to see a lot of reaction out of Ralph. Take a look at it here if you want. The ball tells it all. Tenth board, second arrow, fills up the pocket. A little hand slap says, there you go. Brian Himmler is about the last person you want to try to intimidate, though. No, but every bit helps. <laughs> I do believe that. Ralph working on the strike here in the third. Going just a touch high on the left-hand lane, lane nine. And uh, Ralph will be making the adjustment. And uh, we're seeing him use one of the balls, very not very similar, but the same make a ball that uh, our king Glenn Meese uses, the DB ball, double weight block. And for the torquer he was telling me before the show that allows them to get the ball through the heads, which is the front part of the lane, George, and get it down the lane. The count will hurt him, but uh, you still see him 30 pins in the lead, but Mr. Poley could cut it to 20 with a strike right here. Look out, look out. 6'10", cutting straight through the heart. Lucky to break down the split. Dennis needs to get a little lined up and apply a little bit more pressure to Brian because he's going to run away and hide. You know, Partridge Meats is one of our fine uh, sponsors for this show. And with the, you know, without our sponsors, we couldn't do it. I was at the store this week, and they have a free bowling offer. And what it is, you buy two great games, and you get one free, and it's good for up to four people. Hot dog, hot dog, it's Partridge. I don't know. Just it's a pretty good deal. Dancing hot dogs. I, you know, they, they it's great. It's no longer meat month like it was in no, February, but you can still pick up plenty of fine partridge products. I'm gonna pick some up on the way home because I know the wife. She's not feeling real good today. We're gonna we're gonna take it easy. I'm gonna uh, crank up that old grill, couple them babies up, see what happens, huh? You go all out. You're not like me and just fire up the microwave, huh? No, we don't nuke. That's my, we uh, don't nuke. more difficult. Accuracy is the key on spares. Power is the key to pin action on your first ball. Dennis needs a strike here to have any chance of winning. He is just continually crossing over now. Well, the difference, the difference in the two balls is one thing. The surfaces, we'll go into it in a minute here. Well, let's take a look at Dennis's release. He's well underneath the ball. Boom, there you go. You, it's a good release, a very good release. But the ball is taking off a little too sharply. He covers the 310 nicely, though. So he trails by 14 pins as we enter the 10th frame. His potential 212, and Brian right now is going at a 226 pace. So he needs some help out of Brian, but uh, very easy to understand. He cannot win the game if he doesn't strike on this ball. Oh, no. Left it outside. Well, we're trying to figure out here where this match stands. Well, Dennis, Dennis with his spare and a strike could, could register 199. Brian at that point would just merely have to have a reasonable count in the 10th frame and not even have to mark, but that seals that the face. That pretty much settles it, yep. Brian Himmler is going to go on. 